now let us start uh, uh, the actual process of learning uh, this course which is titled as solar photovoltaics fundamentals technologies and applications uh, uh, over a period of time that is the next 10 days you will uh, uh, you will learn about the fundamentals which means uh, semiconductor material for solar cell application what are the semiconductor you are using what are the basic properties of semiconductor what is pn junction how pn junction is uh, utilized as a solar cell what are the parameters of solar cell what are the technologies for solar cell uh, and what are the other balance of system so for example what is the power electronic side of it uh, how much is the solar radiation that you get how you design a solar pv system based on a availability of solar radiation uh, and so on so there are wide range of topics that are covered in this uh, in this workshop and i'm sure by the end of it uh, if you go through it successfully you will uh, learn a lot from it so the first lecture is about uh, solar PV uh, for our energy needs. So, can we use solar photovoltaic uh, technology to fulfill our energy needs? And uh, in the first lecture, I will give a brief uh, overview of the energy scenario of the country and of the world, and then we will see how this energy required uh, for our country can be obtained using solar photovoltaic technologies. Uh, all these slides are on the Moodle, so you, you may not write uh, each and everything that, this, that is on the slide. Uh, so, as I said, there will be lectures, the labs and tutorials, there is a quiz, multiple choice questions, uh, there is a quiz, a multiple choice question and the question answer session. So, these are the contents uh, of this uh, lectures. I am also giving some references on the photovoltaics that you can use the reference one for example is a very nice book uh, on solid state electronic devices by Banji's treatment uh, it's very nice book and easily available in the indian uh, market the second book which uh, many of you have already received the book uh, which i have authored called solar photovoltaics fundamentals technologies and applications uh, this is published by print all of india in 2009 and what you have received is the second edition of this book so, you can refer to this book also for a lot of materials that will be discussed in this course. There is a very good book on physics of semiconductor devices by uh, SMZ and some other uh, references that uh, if you have access you can go through. So, there are a lot of material available and uh, uh, you can go through this material. The references that I am citing here is mainly on the solar photovoltaic cells, technologies, fabrications, phys physics etcetera. The other instructor of this course, Professor Fernandez will actually uh, give you uh, what are the uh, books that you can use for the power electronic side of it, the electronic side of this. Okay. Now, this is the planning of the lectures uh, that I will be giving, solar photovoltaic uh, for our energy needs, uh, the sun and earth. So, basically talking about solar radiation, solar energy collection and how the collectors or solar PV modules to be oriented, so that you can get the maximum radiation. Then we will go on to the introduction of solar uh, semiconductor uh, for solar cells, uh, the charge carrier transport which is very important, how the electrons move in a semiconductor, how the electrons and holes are generated. So, we talk about the carrier generation and recombination, the reverse process of generation. Then actually make a come to the p n junction device uh, and how this p n junction device uh, acts as a solar cell. So, p n junction as a, as a solar cell and then uh, then we will actually come to the application side. So, what are the main parameters of solar cell and how these parameters are, uh, uh, are optimized, uh, how we quantify these parameters based on this parameter, how we uh, design a solar cell. So, that your efficiency is maximum, so that the current and voltage that you get from your solar cell is maximum. Then we will move on to the technology side that, that is a fabrication, how a solar cell is fabricated. Uh, uh, how a thin film technology is different from the uh, crystalline silicon wafer based technology. So, you might have heard of this term already a uh, thin film solar cell and crystalline silicon solar cell. So, that we will see the difference between these two technologies and then the solar p module. So, how a individual solar cell is utilized to make a solar p modules, how the cells are connected and uh, how do you design a module. So, that you can get a given amount of current and voltage and power out of it. 
Uh, then performance of PV modules in the field, when actually the modules are installed in the field, the performance is different than the performance uh, in the laboratory for example. And how does the change in the temperature affects the performance of the module, how does the change in the radiation affects the performance of the module. And finally, we use this module to design a PV system and the job of a PV system is to fulfill our energy requirement. It may be a household requirement, it may be a industry uh, electricity requirement, it may be a institute's electricity requirement or it may be a big power plant of the megawatt level size. Okay, so, this is kind of outline of the lectures which I am going to give, but as I told uh, Professor Fernandez who will actually talk about uh, the other side of it, the balance of system, the power electronics will actually give the uh, details of his lectures. Okay, as per the plan, uh, today there are two lectures, this lecture and the next one. The next lecture is supposed to be given by Professor Fernandez, but today I am taking both the lectures. The lecture one uh, that is a PV as energy source and some part of the solar radiation. Okay, talking about sun and earth movement, uh, I, I will take these two lectures today. Okay, so, so, let us start, everybody is with me so far, all the remote centers are with me. Now, let us start, so we look at the energy scenario and the process, what is happening, uh, world energy scenario, Indian energy scenario and the most important question is, can a solar PV supply all our energy needs? That is the most important question that we want to learn. Uh, just to begin with, I thought I will just uh, uh, kind of revise the units of energy. Uh, energy is the capacity of body to perform work, everybody have studied that, it is a driving, uh, it is a driving for, uh, force for a, uh, the change or uh, it is the potential uh, difference which can drive the current in electrical circuit. So, there are many ways, there are many forms of energy, there is a nuclear energy, there is electrical energy, there is a chemical energy, there is a light energy, there is a potential energy and so on. So, energy has a many form. Uh, which can uh, actually be used to perform a given task. Similar to uh, the many units, smaller and big units for the distance, for example, we have units of nanometer, micrometer, centimeter, kilometer uh, and so on. Similar to that energy also can be measured in the many units, some units are very small, some units are very large. Okay, for example, calorie is one unit of energy, joule is another unit of energy, electron volt is another unit of energy. The relationship are given here, so one calorie is about 4.184 joule, one electron volt which is the smallest unit of energy is 1.6 times tensor or minus 19 joules, okay, so very, very small amount of energy. Then people also use, some people also use what is called British thermal unit and it is 1.05 kilo joules. All the energy I have given in terms of the kilojoule. So, there is also unit of erg, tens power 7 erg is 1 joule. So, if you put them in order in terms of the size of the unit, British thermal unit is larger than the calorie, calorie is larger than the joule, joule is larger than the erg and erg is larger than the electron volt. Okay. In this particular course, we are talking, we are going to talk about one unit which is the electron volt. So, when we talk about the semiconductors, when you talk about the electrons, when you talk about the photons, uh, they carry very small amount of energy and therefore, we use electron volt as uh, our unit of energy. Okay. Other unit is joule, which is commonly used, uh, but uh, let me ask you a question, what is the energy unit uh, for your electricity bill, right. When you pay electricity bill, we pay in the number of unit. Okay. So, somebody might be paying a bill for 30 units, somebody paying for 100 units, 150 units. So, what is that one unit of electricity? What is one unit of electricity that we pay bill for? Okay, so, one unit of electricity uh, is actually 1 kilowatt hour. Okay. One kilowatt hour basically means that one kilowatt of load, when it runs for one hour, it consumes one kilowatt of hour watt hour of energy. Okay. One simple thing that uh, you know, but uh, I just want to repeat that uh, energy is actually uh, power into the time that, uh, uh, okay. so if uh, the load for example, if you have a bulb of 100 watt, okay, if you have a bulb of 100 watt and it is, it is running for 10 hours, okay. the bulb of 100 watt is running for 10 hours. So, what you have is 1000 watt hour, okay, that is your energy consumed by the 
bulb of 100 watt for 10 hours. Okay, now, 1000 is 1 kilo. So, we can also write it 1 kilo watt hour. Okay, this is how we write in short. So, 1 kilo watt hour is actually 1 unit of electricity. Okay, so, this is the, the most commonly used uh, unit in our daily life. So, 1 kilowatt hour is 1 uh, uh, electricity unit. Fine, so let us come back to this. 1 kilowatt hour is uh, 1 unit of electricity and how much is this in terms of the joule? Okay, it is again very simple. Watt is joule per second okay? and you multiply by hour. 1 hour is 3600 seconds. So, you will find that 1 kilowatt hour is 3600 kilojoules of energy. So, we should know this conversion because uh, 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 we very uh, often we will see the energy units either in joules or in kilowatt hour. Kilowatt hour is a very large unit, uh, joule is a smaller unit and electron volt is very small unit. There is even bigger unit of energy that people use which is called as TOE that is tons of oil equivalent. Okay? TOE is tons of oil equivalent. It is the energy released from burning of 1 ton of oil of a given calorific value and it typically amounts for about 42 giga joule of energy, 42 into 10 is power 9 joule of energy that is 1 ton of oil equivalent. Okay. The, you can also using the relationship between kilowatt hour and joule, using the relationship between TOE and joule, you can also convert into ton of oil equivalent is actually 11634 kilowatt hour. Okay. So, now putting all the energy units together, we have very small unit which is electron volt and we have very large unit which is tons of oil equivalent. And what unit that normally we use in our daily life is basically electro, uh, electricity unit is kilowatt hour. Okay. So, just keep this in mind and this was just to revise basic energy units. Moving on to the next, how much energy is required? Okay. How much energy is required in the world? Uh, so, when I pause for a, for a, for a second or 10 second or 20 second, basically I am pausing so that you can think about the answer or you can make a guess of answer and do not tell anybody just, uh, just for yourself and then we can come back to that. Okay. So, how much energy is required in the world and what is the world energy scenario? Okay. So, for example, this graph. Uh, uh, gives you uh, I energy consumed. Okay, this is the total energy consumed by the way. The energy total energy includes electricity, it includes energy in the transport, it includes energy in the cooking, uh, biomass, everything. And it is given in terms of the exajoule and one exajoule is tens for 18 joule. Okay, one exajoule is tens for 18 joule and this is given with respect to time. So, you can see that in about 1980s, the energy worldwide energy consumption was about 300 exajoules, which is now increasing uh, very uh, very regularly. And in 2005, the energy consumed by the world was about 488 exajoules. Okay, 488 times 10 to 18 joules, huge amount of energy. Okay, so so you can convert this exajoule into the watt hour also. Here it is given terawatt hour. Uh, 1 tera is tens for 12. So, the actually the energy consumed in, in terms of terawatt hour is uh, 138,000 terawatt hours. It is equivalent to the power plant of 15.7 terawatt. If the 15.7 terawatt and tera is tens for 12. So, if a power plant of 10 of 15.7 terawatt and note this number runs throughout the day throughout the year then you will actually generate this amount of energy. Okay, so, basically what you need in the world is a power plant of a 15.7 terawatt which is working all the time and if that power plant is working all the time, it will generate enough energy which is consumed by the world all over the world as of now. So, eventually we want to compare this number 15.7 terawatt and how much is the solar radiation that is coming to earth. Okay, and how that number is compares. So, that, that is why I just keep note of this number. And we know that energy requirement is growing all the time and this graph is very clear that our energy requirement is growing all the time and it is growing because of the two factor, very strong factor. The population is growing and 
the you might have uh, be aware of the recent news that you know our world population has crossed now 7 billion people. That is one factor that is causing the increase. The second is the, uh, the gross domestic product or the GDP is also increasing and increased GDP requires increased amount of energy uh, consumption. And therefore, uh, there are many developing countries uh, or underdeveloped countries which needs to develop and therefore, the GDP will increase, their GDP will increase and the energy requirement will increase. So, therefore, in order to keep a pace with the population growth and GDP growth, we definitely have to produce more and more energy in the coming years. So, from where this energy will come? That is the question. Uh, uh, from where this energy will come? And this is just another slide to show you that uh, how closely the GDP growth is linked with the energy growth. Okay. Here, uh, the numbers are given in terms of tons of oil equivalent, okay, tons of oil equivalent TOE, metric tons of oil equivalent and here the GDP in billion dollars. And you can see that it is very closely uh, related how, how the GDP growth is resulting in the energy consumption growth. So, which is very simple uh, and easy to understand. This is a very interesting graph uh, that suggests that uh, the human development index. Okay, now, the human development index is an index which accounts for the quality of life of the people, which accounts for the literacy rate, which accounts for the, the income, which accounts for the health. Okay. So, human development index 1 is absolutely ideal living conditions human development index 0 or is a very pathetic condition. Okay. So, now you can see that and this human development index is plotted as a function of annual per capita electricity consumption. Okay. So, the electricity as our unit that, that you know now kilowatt hour varies from 2000, 6000, 8, 10000 and 16000. You can see that as the electricity consumption increase how the human development in index increase. Okay. The, the important part is in this part when the curve is very steep. Okay. So, for a small increase in the electricity consumption, there is a large increase in the human development index. India is somewhere here about 0.5 human development index just about that. And if we and right now our per capita per year energy consumption is about 600 units or 600 kilowatt hour per capita per year. If you go from 600 to just 2000, in our standard of living can increase significantly, okay, which means our income will increase, our health condition will increase, our literacy will increase. So, the development, human development is also related with, elect, with energy consumption and, uh, and that makes all the way more important that we you produce more energy and uh, solar photovoltaics can be one way of doing that. What are the various renewable energy sources? You know it well, fossil energy, so coming from coal, oil, gas, uh, renewable energy coming from wind, solar, radiation, biomass, nuclear energy uh, coming from the nuclear fuels, uh, gravitational energy okay, that is because of the interaction between the sun and earth, uh, gravitational forces and geothermal energy. So, these are the various ways, the resources that can be used to supply our energy demand. Okay. Right now, all over the world, the dominant supply of our energy requirement is coming from the fossil energy, which you know that it causes pollution, there is a environmental damage, there is increase in CO2, I will show you some of the slides for that. Renewable energy, especially the solar is a tremendous potential, I will show you the slides on that can be very useful, but there are other sources that can also be used. So, let us look at what is our primary uh, fossil fuel based energy. Uh, and how it can fulfill the requirement. So, as I said the world as a whole primarily using the fossil fuel based energy. These are the data from 2002, but the, the proportion or the percentage are nearly similar now. So, you can see the coal uh, supplies about 23 percent of energy, oil 35 percent and uh, note that this is a primary energy, it is not only electricity. Okay. It's, it is all forms of energy that we use in transportation, in cooking, in uh, uh, in electricity, any other form of electric energy that we use, that is referred as a primary energy. So, you can see now that coal is 23 percent, oil is 35 percent, gas is 21 percent. So, okay. You put this together, you are already talking about more than 75 percent of our energy is coming from the fossil fuel. And then, then you have the biomass, the biomass is very large because many developing nations use biomass for cooking. 
okay, and therefore this is significant. Otherwise, the use of biomass for electricity only is small, and renewable is one percent. And because of the many government initiatives, now the contribution of other renewable energy sources is also increasing. Okay, so world energy sources is pre predominantly by the fossil fuel based, and this has to change in the later future. Why? For many reasons. So, for example, when we start using energy, so we use energy, for example, in our load, our lights, our computers, our, our, our automobile, our fans. But the the whole journey of the fuel start much earlier. Okay, so the journey of fuel start from the mining, for example, mining of the coal gas oil. Then you actually convert this fuel into the secondary fuel, which is maybe a refined oil. Uh, it may be a uh, electricity at the power plant. Then you transmit and distribute this system, uh, this energy. For example, you then you transmit and distribute the oil to the various petrol pump, for example, so that it can then go into the uh, your vehicles and be used. Or you generate electricity at power plant and you transmit to the various substations, and then finally to your uh, the house or industry so that you can use it. And finally, this is actually utilized by the loads. Okay, so, if you can look at the journey of the fuel, it goes through the various processes, various conversion before it is finally utilized. And as a result of this long process of conversion from the source to the final application, there is a efficiency or not that high and we lose lot of energy in, in between. So, overall efficiency normally comes out to be about 15 to 16 percent only. Okay, fine, even if we think about the conventional energy sources, how long we can use them, how long we can use coal, how long we can use oil, how long we can use gas. And uh, just to cut the story short, I, here what I have made a table uh, which talks about how much is the overall reserves of the fuel. Okay. So, for example, oil in terms of the billion barrels, there are 1047 billion barrels, the gas uh, is about 5500 standard cubic feet and the coal is about 984 billion tons. These are the data about 2005-06, numbers might have been different little bit, but look at the production at that time. So, the production at that time is 26 billion barrels per year. Okay. So, this is our total reserve, this is our per year consumption, you divide this number by this number you will get this, okay, which means the availability of the fuel for that particular for number of years. You can do this exercise for the other fuel and you will find that. Uh, you will find that uh, uh, the oil will only be available for 40 years and gas for 53 years, coal is because the consumption is less it can be available for longer period. But which means the only point that I uh, want to emphasize here is this all these fossil fuel based sources are limited in the quantity, they are not produced at the rate uh, at which they are consumed and therefore, we can say uh, they are non renewable in nature. What about India? So, India's coal uh, consumption and production is here, oil available reserves is 700 metric tons, our consumption is very large and this shows the picture of the oil in terms of the million, bar uh, uh, million barrels per day MBD. What you can see here is our domestic production shown by yellow is very small as compared to what we consume and uh, our imports are very large. In 1997, our imports are 57 percent, today's condition it is about 85 percent of oil that we import and in the years to come, we will even import more. Okay. But if you suppose we do not import and we consume whatever oil available in our country, uh, it data shows that we will, will run out of the oil only within 6 to 7 years. Okay. So, we can survive with our own oil only for 6 to 7 years. Importing oil is a lot of money that you have to pay and it is also related to the security. Okay, the uh, Suppose a countries which are producing or supplying the oil to us, if they stop giving our, our oil to us, then lot of our activities, uh, our economic activities will stop, will suffer and we will suffer. And therefore, there is a need for alternative energy options that we must find out. Now, let us look at the Indian electricity scenario, what is happening? Uh, so, so far we have been talking about the energy in general, which includes other forms of energy, but let us look at the electricity, because the photovoltaic technology is mainly used for electricity generation. Okay. So, if you look at our electricity scenario, uh, our total installed capacity is about 177,000 megawatts, 
so about 177 gigawatts that is what is there in the country right now. Uh, out of which thermal power uh, is 115 gigawatt, uh, out of which uh, most of it is coming from the coal. So, about 54 percent of our electricity comes from the coal, 10 percent from the gas, small percentage from the oil, because oil is mainly used for the transport application. Hydro is significant, about 22 percent, nuclear is small percentage and uh, now we have the significant contribution of renewable energy sources. About 10 percent of the installed capacity comes from the renewable energy sources of which wind is significant. Okay, so, predominantly our electricity scenario is 65 percent coming from the thermal route okay, and a small percentage come from the renewable which is very significant by the way. But one thing we have to notice that this is the percentage of the power capacity. Okay, the more important uh, is the percentage of the energy capacity, how much energy these renewable energy sources produce and because our supply of the fuel, renewable energy fuel like solar radiation is not continuous, the contribution to the energy from the renewable energy sources is less than 10 percent. Okay. Similar wind is not continuous 24 hours, so the contribution of power is 10 percent, but the contribution of, uh, of those power into the electricity generated is less and then we will we'll come to that. Okay. Uh, so, this is the scenario of electricity generation, earlier slide was about the power capacity, now this is the electricity generation, total generation. So, you can see that we have produced 771 billion units, okay. remember what is one unit? One unit is one kilowatt hour. Okay. So, we have generated 70, 771 billion units in 2009-10, 811 billion units in 2010-11. Do not worry about this number, we will come to that. So, basically we, we our electricity generation in the country is in the range of 800 and now it this year it may be about 850 billion units. Is that large number of, so it is a billion kilowatt hour, is that large number of electricity? probably not, because our population is also very large. So, in the tutorial you will solve one of the problem which is related to that, that if this is our generation of electricity per year, if we divide with our population, then you will find how much electricity is available to us per capita. Okay. So, that is the problem that you will do in your tutorial. Now, one important thing uh, that you uh, must learn here uh, with the power, uh, with respect to the power plant is that, uh, is the capacity factor. Okay. So, the capacity factor is the ratio of energy generated by a power plant during a period, okay. this period can be one day, one month, one year, divided by the energy generated that the plant would have generated if operated with 100 percent capacity in the same time. And we know that for example, a solar power plant, if it is installed, though it is let us say capacity 1 megawatt, but this 1 megawatt will not be produced in the night, because in the night there is no radiation available. Okay. But a thermal power plant of 1 megawatt can operate almost 24 hours, because the coal is, is kind of stored and it can be continuously supplied. Okay. So, the capacity factor gives us an idea how many percentage of the time a plant is operational. Okay. So, how many percentage of the time the plant is operational. So, in that way if I want to calculate the energy, okay, as I said energy generated is, is the power into the time. Okay. Suppose, I have 1 megawatt plant okay, and it is operating for 24 hours, it will generate 24 megawatt hour of electricity. Okay. Now, many times this power plant do not operate for 100 percent of time, because of the maintenance schedule you have to stop uh, for some time. Uh, if it is a hydro power plant, the availability of the water in the dam will affect the operation and therefore, uh, that factor is how many percent of the time the plant is operational is actually uh, captured by the capacity factor. Okay. So, normally instead of instead of using this as expression for finding out how much energy a power plant will generate, I should actually use the expression that uh, energy from the power plant would be equal to the power capacity, okay. maybe 1 megawatt plant, 10 megawatt plant and the time normally let us say uh, one day time. If you are calculating it may be one month or one year and then the capacity factor okay, C f let us say, 
C f is the capacity factor. Okay, and this capacity factor will then actually tell me the actual energy. Okay. Now, this capacity factor can be small for a renewable energy technology and therefore, just looking at the power capacity does not give me the correct picture. I will give some numbers of the capacity factors. For example, the capacity factor uh, for a coal based power plant is normally 70 to 80 percent, it can be 85 percent, 90 percent also. Uh, similarly, for the hydro based power plant and for the nuclear power plant, it can be again 70, 80, 80 percent. But the capacity factor for wind, the capacity factor for wind is only about 14 to 20 percent, okay. 14 to 20 percent. Similarly, the capacity factor for PV is again only about uh, 14 to 20, 22 percent. So, therefore, it is important that if you take a right capacity factor, then for a in order to calculate energy from a power plant, you have to make sure that you take a capacity, the power, the time and the capacity factor. That will give the true picture of how much energy a given power plant can generate. Okay. Therefore, it is not the power capacity of the plant that is important, it is the energy generated uh, by the plant is uh, that is more important. Okay, fine. Uh, so, these are the numbers uh, that typically uh, that you can get. Again, you will do one uh, problem in your tutorial about the capacity factor. Okay. So, suppose a plant capacity is given, the energy produced by the plant is given in a given time, it may be one day again or one month, then you, you should be able to find out the capacity factor. Or if the capacity factor of the plant is given, uh, is sometime it is also called as a plant load factor. Okay, sometime it is also called plant load factor. Also, if the plant load factor is given, you should be able to calculate how much energy a given power plant will generate. Okay, moving forward, so we know that there are limitation of the conventional sources. The uh, the quantity availability is limited. The use of renewable energy, fossil fuel based sources causes the environmental damage. I will show you the slide for that. It is a centralized energy source. Therefore, the energy generation occurs at one place and it is distributed uh, all over the places. Then there are related to that are the transmission and distribution losses. Energy security is also issue. Oil is not for example, produced in the country and if other countries decide not to supply oil, it will become a difficult scenario for us. So, considering this, uh, uh, we should actually look for the alternative energy sources. How much is the environmental damage that is caused? There is a lot of news, uh, uh, especially after this IPCC, that inter, uh, Intergovernmental Committee for the, the Climate Change report has come out and it has linked that the increase in the CO2 in our atmosphere has resulted in an increase in the temperature and it will continue to do so. Uh, if you do not take care of it. So, if you look at the pre industrial era, the CO2 percentage was about uh, 280 parts per million. The CO2 concentration is given in terms of the ppm, ppm is parts per million. How does after the industrialization, how is the part, how the CO2 is increasing? And now, when the current industrial rate, the CO2 increase is very high, and we have already about 390 to 400 parts per million. And if it continues like this, people have estimated that uh, the earth temperature could actually increase by 4, 5, 6 degrees centigrade by 2050 and you can imagine that is not acceptable uh, or it will not be sustainable uh, life on earth and therefore, we have to some do something to minimize the CO2. What we can do? We can use alternative energy sources which does not cause the pollution, which does not emit the CO2. And this alternative sources can be solar, it can be wind, it can be biomass, it can be small hydro, it can be tidal energy, it can be ocean thermal, geothermal or anything. In this particular course, our interest is on solar photovoltaics. Okay. So, we will just focus on the solar photovoltaic itself. One good thing about the solar photovoltaic is very direct way of energy conversion. So, if you for example, look at the thermal way of energy conversion, solar thermal then you actually have the sunlight, then you have to concentrate light because all the solar thermal power plant use concentrated light. So, you have to concentrate the light, you, you generate high temperature, using that high temperature you generate uh, steam and then use the steam to drive the turbine, then use the turbine output to fade into the generator 
and get the electricity. So, this is a long process. Okay. If it comes to the wind turbine for example, you have the sunlight which causes the wind flow, uh, wind flow result in the uh, motion of the rotor of the, uh, the blade of the wind turbine and that is fed to the generator and then the generator gives the electricity. So, this is the path for solar to, to electricity using wind. Look at the path for the solar cells. You get the sunlight, you put the solar cell and you get the electricity. Okay, very simple, direct. There is no part that is moving, uh, therefore the maintenance is very low uh, and it is so simple that you can actually make a solar PV very small uh, as per your need. You can make, take a 1 watt of power, 1 milliwatt of power, 1 microwatt of power, but also you can actually get a megawatt of power or even gigawatt of power. So, energy conversion through solar cell is very simple and that is what you are learning in this course. How much percentage of our energy requirement can be supplied by solar PV technology? That is the final question that uh, we want to answer in this lecture. How much percentage of our energy requirement can be supplied by solar PV technology? You have any answer to that? Any idea, any guess? Okay. So, the answer is yes, we can actually supply the whole energy requirement by using very small portion or the fraction of the solar radiation. Let us look at uh, the world solar radiation map. The world solar radiation map is having a uh, radiation energy. Okay. So, it is given in terms of uh, energy, radiation energy is again here we are giving in terms of the kilowatt hour. Remember kilowatt hour is unit of energy and 1 kilowatt hour is 1 electricity unit. The amount of solar radiation falling on a given surface at a given location, given country is also given in terms of kilowatt hour, but we talk about how many kilowatt hour per meter square. Okay. So, the energy unit is given in terms of kilowatt hour per meter square per year. Okay. So, this map is the world map of solar radiation kilowatt hour per meter square per year. So, the blue is actually 400, 500 kilowatt hour. You see none of the areas blue except few, but most of the area is red and orange and yellow, okay, which means that most part of the world receives the solar radiation. I hope you can see this number, but here we have 1000 here we have 1500 and here we have 2000 and here we have 2500. Okay, so, most of the part receives lot of sunlight. Uh, by the way, the 2000 kilowatt hour is a very, very large amount of solar radiation. Okay, so, look at the India. Most of the India is about yellow color, yellow and bright orange color and which means that we receive a lot of amount of solar radiation. What I have done a very simple calculation here that India electricity consumption density Okay, what, is, what I have done? I have taken the energy produced in India, electricity produced in India, sorry. How much electricity we produce? I have given you the earlier number per year. The electricity produced is 800 billion units per year in India. If I divide that number by the area of India, so if I divide the 800 billion unit, I have converted into the kilowatt hour. So, that is a common unit I am using here also and here also. So, if I divide if I convert uh, that uh, electricity produced in India and if I divide by the area, okay, area, the, the surface area of India, then actually the electricity density of the country is only 0.35 kilowatt hour per meter square, okay, per meter square per year. How much is available? 2000 kilowatt hour per meter square per year. Okay. So, 2000 kilowatt hour per meter square per year is available, while we are consuming is only 0.35 kilowatt hour per meter square per year. Okay. So, let me repeat the question again. Can we generate all our electricity from solar PV modules? Answer should be emphatically yes, because the area that we are going to use is very small. So, then considering the potential for the solar energy, our electricity, uh, by the way this is the world electricity I am considering. The total world electric, uh, energy, uh, sorry the electricity consumed is 56.7 exajoules remember 1 x i stands for 18 joules. The solar radiation falling on earth surface is, is 3.8 million exa joules, okay. much, much, much higher than what is being produced. So, this point is again just to emphasize that, uh, this, this point is again just to emphasize that uh, whatever we are uh, using right now, the solar energy received by the earth is much, much higher and therefore, it is a big, big potential to fulfill all our energy requirement using solar. 
remember one earlier number that I told you that all the energy that we consume is equivalent to a 15.7 terawatt plant operating full time in the world. Look at the solar radiation that is coming to us, 90 times tens power 12. Okay. Uh, so, it is a, it's a much, uh, much, much higher several thousand times higher uh, than, uh, than what is, uh, what is actually needed. By the way, this should be the tens power 15. So, it is a petawatt, 19 petawatt. So, 1 peta is tens power 15. So, there is mistake here. This is not tens power 12, it should be tens power 15. Okay. So, our current power is in the range of uh, 15 terawatt that is tens power 12 and what is reaching on the earth surface is petawatts. Okay. So, about 10,000 times more than what is consumed or what is required. Again, re-emphasizing the fact that both in terms of the energy and the power, the amount of solar radiation received on earth is much, much higher than what we are generating and consuming. Okay. So, uh, this is very interesting graph that shows that the amount of solar radiation, but it also shows that this dots, okay, this dot here in the North America, South America, uh, Africa, Middle East, Asia, Australia. Okay. What it says is that this is the land area that is available, uh, the land area where the water is not there. If you install a solar power, solar photovoltaic only of this area, which is the size of the dot. Okay. If you only consume this area, and if you install your solar photovoltaic module on this, this uh, dots covering the area exactly equal to the dot size, then that should be sufficient to generate all the energy requirements of the world. Okay. So, in terms of the area required to install a photovoltaic module is again very, very small as compared to the area available to us. Re again re-emphasizing the fact that yes, it is possible that by using only very small area, we can generate all the energy required in the world. For India, I have again done a small calculation and you can also do this calculation yourself. And this is part of assignment also, one of the tutorial problem is this, that if you use a modules of only 10 percent efficiency, if you use a solar PV module of only 10 percent efficiency, and if you cover 100 by 50 kilometer square area in the country in India. Okay, so, take 10 percent modules cover 10, 100 by 50 kilometer square, which is very small as, per, as compared to 3000 by 2000 kilometer square that is available. So, but if you do this, then India will generate enough electricity to produce uh, what we are producing by other power plants today. Okay. So, we will generate enough electricity which we are producing by other power plant today. So, uh, so basically we can fulfill all our electricity requirement by using very small portion of the country of, of the land area available. So, in conclusion, coming to the end of the first lecture. Then in conclusion, solar energy is a huge potential to meet our energy requirement. I guess all of you uh, must be convinced by the slides that I have shown you. And now, we should understand how much uh, to, uh, how much we can make use of the solar energy using solar photovoltaic. And therefore, uh, with this background about the solar photovoltaic and the solar energy with this background, uh, this course uh, will provide you the fundamentals, technologies, fabrication and application and, uh, uh, and we'll, we have designed the lectures toward that. So, if there are any questions, please ask. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, this was the, the background lecture and after this, we will start learning about little bit more about the solar radiation and how to install your photovoltaic module, so that you can collect the best radiation possible. So, we will little bit learn about the sun and earth uh, moment with respect to each other and how much solar radiation is available. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please ask. Uh, we have a couple of uh, uh, minutes for this lecture. Okay, VNIT Nagpur. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, what is the yearly increase in solar power generation in India? What is the increase in solar power generation in India? Uh, well, India have done very good in the last two years. Uh, in 2009, our installed power capacity was only about 10 megawatt, but as of now we have uh, as the as the secretary told in the morning in inaugural session that there is about 150 megawatt of solar power installed in the country. And as per the national solar mission, we are targeting 20,000 megawatts by year 2022. Okay. And my personal uh, belief is that I think when the year 2022 will come, we will install much, much more than 
20,000 megawatt and that is why all this uh, manpower is required and that is where all of you can play a very important role. Jaipur College. Yes sir, my question is very simple. I just want to ask that you have told we can achieve the energy uh, as much required today with this technology. Then sir, why we are not using this technology? What is the main problem behind all these things? Okay. What are the main problems that we are not using this technology? Whether we can achieve all the energy which is required today? Right, right. Okay, so good question. So if it is so nice, if it is you know clean technology, if uh, we can actually produce large amount of energy, why uh, we are not using it? And the one reason is the economy. Okay, the cost of uh, installation of solar energy uh, technology is very high right now. But I mean, let me tell you that as the secretary also mentioned in the morning, two years back, the cost of electricity that company were quoting was about 17 rupees per kilowatt hour. Today, uh, there is a smallest quote that one company has come is 7.5 rupees only per kilowatt hour. Okay? So, with the advancement in the technology and the volume of production is increasing, the cost of solar energy is also decreasing. Also, there is a one presentation that I have attended yesterday that there is always talk about the grid parity. Okay? Grid parity means at what time the cost of the solar electricity becomes equal to the cost of the grid electricity. And the, the presenter showed that there are already 8 countries where the grid parity has been achieved by the solar power and I am sure in the couple of years more there will be many other countries where the grid parity will be achieved. And because of this uh, increase in the technology, de decrease in the cost, increase in the efficiency, now it is becoming more and more viable uh, for the countries to afford solar power, but it was not possible 5 years ago. And I will also want to give example of IIT Bombay itself. At IIT, we are installing 1 megawatt of solar photovoltaic power, okay? because the cost of electricity that we pay is actually higher than the cost of solar electricity. Now, 5 years back, this was not the case, but now because the electricity, grid electricity prices are going up, solar prices are going down, so it is becoming more and more viable now. Okay, KG Somaya College. That with the installing the power plant, solar power at dots, which is mentioned in the world map. But sir, will you think that uh, what is the cost of transmission and what is the loss? Transmission. Okay, a uh, very good point. Uh, that you know the whole advantage of a renewable energy technology that it is distributed, and because all our users are also distributed. So, it will not make a sense to actually put all your power plant at one point and then distribute. Okay? That idea was only to convince you that uh, by using small amount of power, uh, sorry small amount of area, we can actually fulfill all our energy requirement, but by no means it suggests that we should actually put all power plant at the same place. Definitely renewable energy is distributed, all users and all our applications are distributed and therefore, we should not go for all the concentrated uh, plant at one place. Okay, go ahead for the next question. Uh, sir, uh, in uh, India particularly, we have a monsoon over fixed period of time. So, during which the solar radiation is poor, but the wind is significant. So, is India planning to have a hybrid uh, technology of uh, solar and wind and, uh, energy in future? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, definitely uh, uh, solar photovoltaic you know may not be the only solution and in the future uh, energy scenario of the country uh, i'm sure there will be a coal based power plant there will be a pv power plant there will be hydro there will be nuclear there will be thermal so we have to actually combine all the technologies and uh, you know then make the best use of whatever is available but uh, definitely the only one technology will not be our solution we have to rely on many technologies one last question from uh, Bhopal. Uh, sir, my question is, uh, the in world energy scenario, the contribution of renewable energy is only 1 percent as you saw in your presentation. So, what are the possible reasons and how it can be improved, situation how can be improved? Okay, one way to improve the situation is actually train 1000 teachers, which we are doing right now. So, uh, basically, uh, <laughs> Basically, it requires you know the technologic development, it requires uh, uh, government policies, it requires trained manpower, it requires user awareness, public awareness about the renewable energy technology 
and i would like to quote the example of a germany germany actually receives much less solar radiation than what we do but still the solar power installed in germany is the highest in the world and being a very small country why it is possible because government is very receptive the public is actually wanting to do that so in order to uh, for a technology to be successful there are many factors that are involved and factor one of the factor is uh, for example policies finances technological development trained manpower and so on and in india we want to we are trying to create that ecosystem the government has already done a significant job by you know uh, having a good policy in place uh, uh, technological development is happening in the country and worldwide also but there is a shortage of manpower so i think you people all the teachers i am requesting again and again uh, that there is a huge uh, requirement of the people and uh, I, 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 I request all of you to actually learn this PV technology and teach as many students as possible, uh, uh, so that you know we can contribute to the growth of this technology, not only in our country, but let us say we can lead this moment in all the developing countries. Okay? So therefore, as I mentioned uh, that uh, we were conducting the quizzes, this quizzes will be conducted, please pay attention. and those who are uh, uh, those who will score very good mark will issue about 100 certificates of excellence uh, i would like to ask uh, uh, what is the uh, life of a pv solar uh, panel and uh, the after the life it is uh, it has completed the life uh, is it uh, harmful for the um, when when we bury it or we is it harmful for the okay. environment? Okay, so first question, life of the solar PV modules is about 25 years and uh, there is people have already used it for 25 years, so that is proven. Uh, so solar cell for example, uh, is solar module is made of a glass, aluminum frame, silicon, uh, metals uh, including silver, aluminum, all these materials are actually recyclable. Okay, so once the life is over, uh, there it will not cause any damage to the environment, so that uh, aspect is taken care. Okay, thank you very much to all of you. Uh, uh, let me stop here for this particular lecture.